Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today for the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, love is in the air as we move to Amazon Lily in order to examine the Mero Mero no Mi. The Mero Mero no Mi is a paramecia type fruit that allows its user to, uh, well, essentially use any kind of lustful, perverted, or feelings of love towards the user to their great advantage in a wide variety of ways. Not the greatest of basic explanations out there, but it's certainly not the simplest of fruits we've seen either. In the series, it was consumed by Pirate Empress and Warlord of the Sea, Boa Hancock, and it was first brought to our attention during the Amazon Lily arc. The fruit takes its name directly from the Japanese onomatopoeia, Mero Mero, which means something along the lines of to fall down drunk, and can be applied to an individual being overcome with some sort of emotion, in this case being love and or lust. And given that this meaning would be quite difficult to convey in English without calling it the drunk drunk fruit or something, both Viz and Funimation decided to simplify things by going with the love love fruit. All right, so other than psychological manipulation, how does one use feelings of another to your advantage? Well, thanks to the consumption of the Mero Mero no Mi, the user of this fruit is able to more or less harness the power of lust and love to fuel a petrification process, which for the more weak willed of the One Piece world will often result in the victim being turned entirely into stone. Generally, this is achieved through a technique known as Mero Mero Mello, whereby the user forms a heart with their hands and fires a beam, very similar to the beam that the user of the Nora Nora no Mi can fire, actually, except that instead of slowing the target down, should the beam come into contact with the target, that has, uh, how shall we say, impure thoughts about the user, then that person will be turned into stone. However, this is not the only way to achieve that result, as the user is also able to engage in an attack known as Pistol Kiss, whereby they blow a kiss, much like a bullet, which has the same result should it come into contact with a target that has met the conditions and generate a stony outcome. Furthermore, this can also escalate with Slave Arrow, which is like Pistol Kiss, but on a much more massive scale, capable of dealing with truly massive amounts of enemies with a speed and efficiency that is unmatched by the two aforementioned techniques. But finally, for some more precise usage, we have one of my favorite attack names ever with Aromatic Leg. Now being struck by said leg once again results in being turned into stone. However, the area affected is far less widespread and it will generally only petrify a small radius of the body around where the strike was delivered. It should be said that it's currently unknown if this method of petrification requires less stamina or general investment from the user, or if it would be just as easy to perform as any of the more effective techniques I've mentioned. But what this essentially does is open up an avenue for users who are predisposed to hand-to-hand -hand combat, or leg-to-leg -leg combat, or aromatic leg-to-leg -leg combat. Now, whilst in their complete stony form, these victims have no consciousness, thus making them exceptionally susceptible to physical damage. And once your stone self is broken, well, yeah, it's not going to be looking too good for you once you return to the world of the living. By possibly for a, a very brief stay. I mean, that's if you get turned back, that is, because currently the only known way to do so is to have the user graciously depetrify you. Now at this stage, this fruit is sounding pretty damn phenomenal. Taken at face value, it is a huge immediate win condition over 99% of individuals. However, there is one huge, and I mean huge caveat, which is that for this fruit to have any power whatsoever, the person you are using it against must be attracted to you in some form. Now for someone like Boa Hancock, who we'll get into in a bit, this is a very simple condition to meet but for the large majority of humans, this fruit is not going to have the sweeping near universal effects as they have been presented in One Piece. Instead, its effects will be delegated only to those who genuinely find you attractive, which may not always be the person you need to turn to stone. Outside of combat though, I suppose this fruit could have some niche use in the simple area of satisfying curiosity. I mean, it's not a subtle way to go about things, but it would be entirely possible for the user of the Mero Mero no Mi to enter a room, fire a beam, and instantly know who in that room is attracted to them and who isn't, thus saving people who are particularly bad at reading that sort of thing, a hell of a lot of trouble. But this leads to another point though, and that is given that the petrification process uses lust and or love as fuel, I do wonder what the outcome would be on an individual who you know only sort of liked you. Without that overwhelming feeling, would there only be a semi-petrification or would there be no stone business at all? Or is that simple feeling enough to result in a full petrification? It's very difficult to tell because our user in the series evokes exclusively strong feelings. Which brings us nicely to Boa Hancock. Now in the entire history of One Piece, I don't think there has ever been a devil fruit user who is so perfectly matched to their fruit. Boa Hancock is widely regarded as the most beautiful woman in the world, which is a claim we can surprisingly quantifiably measure thanks to her use of the Mero Mero no Mi. In her control, there is almost nobody safe from being turned to stone, and Hancock has used this ability to secure herself a position as one of the seven warlords and ensure the security of Amazon Lily, home of the Kuja tribe. Speaking of though, the Kuja tribe aren't uh, widely in tune to the happenings of the world, to say the least, nor are they aware that the Boa sisters were once slaves of the world nobles and force-fed devil fruits for the amusement of their masters. So in order to mask this shame, Hancock uses her powers to claim that the three of them were cursed after slaying a Gorgon and thus becoming known as the Gorgon Sisters. 
Now I should also point out that Boa Hancock's proficiency with this fruit is actually so great that she can petrify beings that, in theory, should not harbor any feelings of literally any kind. A great example of this are the Pacifista, cybernetic creations based on the former fellow warlord Bartholomew Kuma. Through striking them, Hancock is able to turn parts of them into stone, making them far, far easier to defeat than they otherwise would have been. But this may not necessarily be due to some crazy factor like her beauty transcending consciousness, but it may be because that specific attack, the ever-lovable aromatic leg, does not discriminate in its use and will always result in the area struck being turned into stone, regardless of the feelings or lack thereof of the user. And this is further reinforced when Boa's attack had the same effect on Smoker's Jute during the Marine for Dark. In which case, that would open up a whole new world of possibilities with this fruit, which brings us to Awakening. Now, given that we've already spoken about petrification and pacifistas, I don't see it being a huge stretch to expand the Mera Mera Nimi into being able to turn any other objects or even your environment into stone. Although I guess I would question why that would be in any way useful. I mean, maybe to aid various forms of destruction due to the brittle nature of the stone. But another crazy awakening could see the user being able to petrify people by using emotions other than love or lust. Like for example, if someone was absolutely disgusted by you, imagine being able to harness that or any other strong emotion to your advantage. Because in the end, remember that Mera Mera is an onomatopoeia all about being overcome with a feeling, so we may not need to stick simply to love and lust. In fact, just a little weird thought experiment here. What if the Mera Mera Nami did not act exclusively on love, but rather it uses the strongest possible emotion generated towards the user as fuel? So for example, if someone like Caesar Clown had eaten it, maybe general repulsion would be what the Mera Mera Nami would use as his fuel, or if it was, say, Kaido, then maybe his fuel would be terror. Hey, you know what? This conversation is getting a bit abstract, so let's bring things back a bit. Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming a, uh, um, a love human, I guess. As stated before, the strongest way to counter this fruit is simply not to have any form of attraction towards the user, but other avenues are also available. For example, in the series, individuals who have particularly strong wills have been shown to be immune, such as Crocodile, Mihawk, and Smoker. Of course, this doesn't necessarily mean that they aren't attracted to Boa, they just may have their minds in the right place so as not to be used as stone fuel. Of course, another great example would be Luffy, who is so pure of heart that he pretty much serves as the natural counter to the Mera Mera no Mi. However, if you're a more regular person who is heavily subject to the whims of attraction, then listen carefully because there is a way that you can prevent yourself being turned into stone. Although you're, uh, you're probably not going to like it. But in order to overcome your feelings, essentially what you need to do is substitute that with another feeling. And one that seems to work pretty damn well is pain. And this was shown in the series when Vice Admiral Momonga was forced to stab himself in the hand in order to avoid being turned into stone by Boa Hancock. And look, it's certainly not an ideal solution, but uh, it's something. On the flip side, if you have no self-control at all, such as a certain straw hat chef, then you may even be susceptible to the powers of the fruit even when the user is not actively targeting you. And this was despite when Sanji was turned into stone simply upon sighting Boa Hancock. Although it should be stated that this was a gag and likely isn't how the fruit technically functions. But then again, Maybe it is, or maybe that's an awakening. Lots to think about. So in the end, we do have a bit of an odd fruit to consider here. There's no denying that it is capable of great power. However, a shocking amount of that comes down to the natural attractiveness of the user. I mean, if you're a bad match for the Mera Mera Nimi, there is not a whole lot you can do to train yourself in its use. I mean, I guess you could start dressing better, maybe hire a stylist or undergo some form of cosmetic surgery to enhance it. But it's one of those fruits you would ideally need to very, very carefully consider before consuming it due to its conditions of use. So if you think you're hot af, then by all means go for it. However, if you're of the more humble persuasion, then it may be best to wait for something a bit more versatile. And with that, we are going to commit the Mera Mera no Mi to the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. Next week, we have a first for the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia because we will be covering not one, but two, count them, two mighty Devil Fruits, primarily because their themes are extraordinarily similar and they were introduced at the exact same time. And therefore, I really cannot bring myself to make separate videos for them. But if you like snakes, well, then I have great news for you. And if not, well, apologies in advance. But this double bill will consist of the Heavy Heavy no Mi Model Anaconda and the Heavy Heavy no Mi Model King Cobra. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but applied to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Mero Mero no Me. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.